السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم واللاتی یاتین الفاحشۃ من نسائکم فاستشهدوا فاستشهدوا علیہن اربعۃ منکم فان شهدوا فامسکون فی البیوت ترجمہ اور تفسیر میں کل پیش کر چکا ہوں حضور سر دس از ور سکسٹین اینڈ حضور سر ہیو کامنٹیڈ آن دس ان دا لاسٹ درس اینڈ دیر آر ڈفرینسز آف ویو امنگس دا اسکالرس and some of the differences are quite basic in effect they are not huge some have translated fahisha as adultery and then they say that why not the other punishment as mentioned in surah an-nur of lashes was not mentioned here and some have said that it is for the married woman that she should be stoned and for the others unmarried for lashes and they have presented a hadith they have done that before they, they are doing that now as well that if you take that then there is a difference amongst that report and also it clashes with the Holy Quran and as far as this verse is concerned the way they apply it it is astounding they say that it is linked to that Allah opens a way for them while here it is said that keep them confined in the houses until they die or Allah opens a venue for them lahunna the word shows that this is in their favor that something develops that there is some possibility that with the grace of Allah they will be relieved of this situation and only those kind of relief situations might become available as I mentioned yesterday that Uh, for example if they are unmarried there is uh, an arrangement for their marriage or if their husband dies then they are um, at liberty because there is no one else to supervise them so there are other venues as well which are in favor of the women the scholars have tried to turn to a report which Huzur says in my estimation is a concoction because it conflicts with the Holy Quran and also it conflicts with this verse of the Holy Quran and the importance of the Holy Quran the certainty of the directives is compromised then whatever the scholars try to take help from any reports it cannot be acceptable and that hadith they present which is who thinks is a concoction that when the um, revelation came to the Prophet ﷺ, he was overwhelmed and he also felt deep sense of grief when such a state occurred the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that the Sabil the path that Allah the Almighty had mentioned has been found and that Sabil is that I have been told who said this is not in the Holy Quran so they have said this in this alleged hadith that these women should be given hundred stripes and then stone them as you said this is amazing where is this verse of the holy quran that there would be this kind of directive and then no men are mentioned in this that who were the men who were involved 
and then to say in this report that give them 100 stripes and then stone them and that the matter is resolved. So these are the kind of reports which clash with the Holy Quran and the scholars forget that the Holy Quran is a book where there are no doubts, no ambiguity. And in Hadith there has to be at least this area that the reports were not collected for a hundred years. And Allah knows best what was the quality of memory of those people and what was it that they reported. Was there somebody who is then influenced by somebody who has made up the story and then they accepted that as a hadith? If this is the discussion, there, there are a qualities given to these ahadith of their authenticity that some are zaif, that they are weak, some are unreliable or the reporter is unreliable. So if you continue to rely on them, everything will go topsy-turvy. So you have to stick to the principle that where the Holy Quran is direct in its laws, you will not undertake any report which clashes with it. Otherwise, you would have also have the objection that you are understanding the Holy Quran in your own way. But remember that in Surah Nur, where adultery is mentioned in clear terms, there is no difference of whether the person was married or unmarried and the punishment mentioned is a hundred lashes and the one who has made up the story of allegation then they should be striped by 80 stripes. And the Holy Quran has never mentioned any stoning anywhere. There is another point where stoning is mentioned and that is where people create mischief and that is not only there is no mention there of zana but it is another verse of the Holy Quran. Azur is asking, recite that verse that you can stone them or you can sever their limbs in opposite direction, their hands in opposite direction. During jang muqaddas the holy war, as termed, the debate, the Prophet Muhammad and he was debating this with a Christian missionary, the Prophet Muhammad said that there is the punishment of stoning mentioned in the Holy Quran. When you find it, then it is not mentioned in Surah Lut and the promise Islam is undertaking a debate, a manazra, and you can see that it is mentioned in a verse of the Holy Quran, I will present that to you in a minute. In that verse, the mischief mongers, the rebellious people are mentioned, those who have spread unrest about them. It is said that they should be given very severe punishment so that that becomes a lesson for other people. So in that those punishments are mentioned which used to be given to such kind of people in the previous ages that their opposite hand or leg were severed, like Pharaoh is mentioned as saying that I will give you this punishment, or otherwise they were also banished from the land. Now here, Adultery is not mentioned, but Zu says mischief is mentioned. Zu says, I have mentioned that before, that in my estimation, wherever stoning is mentioned, then it would also be uh, adultery or rape. That would be an act where a woman is raped and she is left 
in an injured state for a young girl to be raped. The teachings of the Holy Quran, if it was applying this kind of uh, punishment on every kind of uh, wrongdoing to be equally punished, then people would say that this is not just. Here, the possibilities are opened that if you see that the intensity of the crime is such that then the society can lay down those punishments, dispense those punishments. One is rape. Where the Prophet Muhammad has given that reference, we will have to then link it. Otherwise, in the Holy Quran, in Surah Nur, that is not mentioned. Then there are other cases where, when it is mentioned, then there are other factors that the claim is not verified. For example, the stoning of the Jews, because the Jews had that punishment in their own scripture. Once a case of a Jew was brought to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the Holy Prophet وسلم, asked those people, they said that you should give him this punishment. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, asked them that, is that the directive, the Torah? They said, yes. The Holy Prophet وسلم, asked for the scripture. So they brought that. And they then presented part of it and covered some parts of it. The companions who knew this teaching, when they saw it, they said that this person is covering part of it. And in that, the punishment of adultery was uh, stoning. Hazur says, I have those references with me of Al-Abar. And from the Bible, it was seen. And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said that your own laws will apply on you. And that is why then the punishment of stoning to death was given. And then there is another report when we will come to it. Then we'll discuss it that the person was proven to be a Muslim. And in that as well, there is a reference which proves with certainty that the Holy Prophet ﷺ did not think of it as the final limitation. If he had thought of it as that, then he could not have changed it by himself. About somebody who was stoned, it is reported that he tried to run. He was chased and then he was stoned. When this report was relayed to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, why did you not allow him to run away? So if the Holy Prophet Sallallahu had such a stance of uh, following to the letter, he was not hard-hearted, but he said that had my daughter become a thief, I would have had her hand chopped. So he guarded the laws of the Holy Quran. Then why would he have said, why did you not let him run away? Although that person had been presented to the Holy Prophet ﷺ before. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ had tried to avoid him. It shows that the Holy Prophet ﷺ did not want to punish him. And he was then giving him like the benefit of the doubt and allowing him the space. But then this man had come to the Prophet himself and he said that, O Prophet of Allah, I have made this mistake. So punish me. The Holy Prophet heard him and turned his face away. 
he came from the other side and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have committed this crime, punish me. Again, the old Prophet وسلم, turned his face away. Then the third time he came from the other direction, when he did it for the fourth time, then the old Prophet وسلم, said, take him away. And the reporters have said that the old Prophet وسلم, said, stone him. Now, the possibilities in this report that surface are that maybe the possibility is the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said take him and punish him and they started stoning him that is why the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said why did you not allow him to escape why didn't you bring him back to me in another report it said that he asked to be taken to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu the question is that if he had been presented to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu before and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu had said that stone him, why would he have said that take me back to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu So it shows that he did not think that that was the punishment the Holy Prophet Sallallahu wanted to be given to him. So that is why he wanted to be taken again to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said punish him, but he did not say stone him to death. So he's saying, okay, take me back to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. and when this was reported to the Holy Prophet ﷺ, and if in effect the Holy Prophet ﷺ had thought that that was the punishment of stoning the man to death then why would he have changed the limitation given by Allah the Almighty why did he say why did he not let him run away and why did he then say why did you not bring him back to me so again this report has these conflicting points contained in it and also maybe these things happened before that verse of Surah Lut and we do not have any clarification but one point is certain that these points these uh, incidents of stoning are being linked by these scholars to this verse of the Holy Quran which we have just read and this verse they also think that it is linked to that verse of Surah An-Nur they say that it is linked and then it abrogates the verse of Surah An-Nur. Huzur says, Imam Sahib, do you understand that those who undertake this stance, they link it, you cannot link it to Surah An-Nur. They say that stoning to death is mentioned at a separate place. And this verse 16 of Surah An-Nisa now here for Allah the Almighty to say that Allah will open a path for them and they say this was the path Uzur says is this the path that how long will they remain in confinement in their homes first strike them with the hundred lashes and then stone them to death this is against human nature this is against the stance and practice of the Holy Prophet so Zu says that when they link it then it shows that this was a verse revealed before Surah An-Nur and when the Surah An-Nur verse was revealed, which is of a similar subject, then the practice of the Prophet وسلم, was that where the Holy Quran has not shed light then he would turn to the previous scriptures so then that was a continuation of the directives of Allah the Almighty like for example turning to the Qibla the direction towards for prayer previously he followed the previous scriptures so until the directive clearly came from Allah the Almighty, the Holy Prophet then continued 
how it was being followed in the previous scriptures. So here the definite resolve would be that Surah An-Nur verses were revealed before and here the subject is different. It is not linked to that at all. Because until the directives come, some punishment had to be dispensed about the Jews. It was clear that that was their practice of stoning. And that is how they dispensed that punishment. When such an incident occurred that a Muslim was involved, then before the revelation of Surah Nur, maybe that happened. That's a possibility that he was also stoned to death. But even that seems far-fetched because the subject in that hadith shows that there is some conflicting report. So under Fahasha, under shameless acts, the shameless acts can be adultery. There is no denial. But shameless acts can also mean something else. And here, the word zana will not be applicable where it is homosexuality because even in the people of Lot in their mention the word fahasha is mentioned shamelessness is mentioned the word and not zana so here this strengthens our view that in this verse 16 of Surah An-Nisa the statement being made is about shamelessness, about homosexuality, that the way the people of the lot had become indulgent in that immoral behavior, that is what is mentioned here, and then about the four witnesses, they link with Surah An-Nur, although they say that that verse was revealed later, then you cannot link both of them. Huzu says that it seems that how that Surah An-Nur incident had made it clear the Holy Quran has mentioned that these are severe steps. So you have to be sure the society is warned that until it is proven beyond doubt, you cannot give these punishments. So some scholars have then inferred that there have to be four men which have to be the witnesses. So this makes it even more difficult that a punishment be brought into play. So the Holy Quran has made it so strict that if this is the behavior where the alarm bells ring far and wide, that the person is careful and he does not do it in public, where people can observe, then it is said that these things must not be seen in society because they affect the society in a negative way. So also the way it is spelt out it is that the everyday bad effects will not ensue and made it in a way that the punishment then would become very difficult. But the four witnesses for adultery as were revealed later in Surah Nur, here in this verse the four witnesses mentioned is that it shows that the principle is that you, it, it has to be widespread and for the protection of women, there are four witnesses mentioned. And when in the next verse, where the men are mentioned, four witnesses have not been demanded. 
بیکاز اللہ دی آلمائٹی سز و لزان یاتی یعنی ہا من کم و آزو ہما دیٹ ٹو مین فرام امنگ یو آر گلٹی آف اٹ اباؤٹ دیٹ سم اسکالرز ہیو ڈبیٹڈ دیٹ ہیئر اٹ مائٹ مین ون مین اینڈ ون وومن committing adultery but the greater of the scholars have said that you have to recite it in light of the previous verse in the previous verse lesbianism would be mentioned and in this homosexual men are mentioned And if two men from among you are guilty of it, punish them both. So in the previous verse, Suzu says, I had presented my understanding where Allah the Almighty says that you can you can find them to the houses who said I had spelt that out yesterday and I stick to that quite firmly I have studied other reports and it is not then conflicting in any way and the subject has been continued in the other words Azu says, I had said that I will read out to you that report. Hadrat Muslim has mentioned various points. We do not need to debate them here at length. But Hazrat uh, Muslim has said that Abu Muslim and Mujahid have translated that. that This is also the early part of shamelessness where people arrive in a situation before indulging in the immoral acts. And the scholars have said that this is also homosexuality which is referred to here. And Hazrat Muslim has said that it is maybe the early part of that immoral relationship. They have not presented this verse and if they meet the two parties, they meet in a way which is under the word Fahisha, who said this is not very clear that when the fatwa came, then they did not present this verse. Who says, what does this mean? Either some word cannot be read properly in these notes here. Who said, but it is sufficient, the discussion we have taken, that some scholars have taken it as the meaning of homosexuality and as you said that is my understanding too and the reference to the context also verifies that. As that Muslim or whose stance can also be accepted because there is no conflict that this The whole application of shamelessness would also be applicable where you would think that this is leading to an immoral relationship, although you cannot see any shamelessness, but it is moving towards that trend. The another la, uh, verse of the Holy Quran says, Wala taqribu zina, they do not even go close to zina, do not go close to adultery. <coughs> Excuse me, Hazur says, then this also verifies that. This does not negate that understanding that this is about homosexuality. As Muslim has said that 
any acts which are going close to shamelessness, the society can take steps to stop it, then have four witnesses who will then verify that this was a situation where it was a compromising kind of situation. Hazu says this is strange that they and then abrogate the people who believe in abrogation, they believe that this is abrogated by the verse of Surah An-Nur. Then which verse was it that which did not become part of the Holy Quran and it abrogated this verse? And they have filled their books with that uh, report they have attributed to Hadrat Umar. Farooq that clearly shows that that was not a verse of the Holy Quran and if it had been, why the Holy Prophet would have kept it out? You have to understand that the way things are recited can be different. Their Qiraat can be different and there would be a very slight difference in the meanings, but they don't clash with each other. Where a difference of view occurs because of reciting it with the different Arab, that is called the difference of recitation. Now here you cannot even take that. They say that Hazrat Umar has reported that this verse had also been revealed that when an old man and an old woman commit this kind of immorality, this was not included in the Holy Quran. How can it knock at the doors of the Holy Quran and be included? So Zur says, those who rely on reports, they should be loyal to the Holy Quran and not be loyal to those people who have concocted so many reports and made it so complex that while the Holy Quran says, La Rai Bafi, there is no ambiguity in it. So to be loyal to the Holy Quran demands that you shut all those kind of doors forever. The only principle is that the Holy Quran does not have any conflict in it. And then take the second principle that none of the verses abrogate each other at all. There is no abrogation. And then that shows that that is also a report that was allegedly a report, and who says that they have presented these kind of reports, and some of them were even entered in Sahih Bukhari, that if a man reflects with the slightest of understanding, it would be impossible that they could use it as a proof. And then there are such proofs as well, which have got nothing to do with the Prophet and they say that some Sahaba have mentioned it. For example, now here this act is being committed as mentioned here and in a hadith it is said that a man said that I saw a female and a male monkey committing adultery while one of them was unmarried and the female had cheated on her male and removed her arm from there and placed a stone and then as they were watching they 
this female monkey then took the young male aside and committed this immorality and I watched it all then she came back and then she removed the stone and replaced her arm back so that the male would not know then the male woke up and found out that she had committed some bad act and he raised hue and cry and a lot of monkeys then gathered and they circled around and then they also caught that other uh, monkey the male monkey from the jungle and they stoned him to death and they have then put this report that this also happens in the animals so why not in the human beings so if this is a verified report then what would be the facts that will emerge and then there are comments and then they said that probably these were the monkeys who were previously Jews and they had then been turned into monkeys and they still had this law they followed and this law of the Bible was applicable on these monkeys even now. So says about this ridiculous report that if they say that this is from Sahih Bukhari Will you then accept it? Who said these are the points because of which I say that now, Zubilla, I am saying that uh, there are wrong reports. There is not an authentic report that would ever conflict with the Holy Quran. It is not possible that there would be any conflict in the creation of God. Similarly, it applies here that the Holy Prophet Muhammad did not have any clash with the Holy Quran. So, to be loyal to the Holy Prophet do not be impressed with where the report came from. If it clashes with the Holy Quran, boldly reject it because the Holy Quran says there is no ambiguity in the Holy Quran and then if there is anything which is reported as allegedly have come from the Holy Prophet if it clashes with the Holy Quran then it is not a correct report. So Zu says that's why I have read out this report to you and this is under this verse of the Holy Quran the scholars have mentioned this report and then there is also the debate about a slave girl. Now here the punishments for these crimes are mentioned and they say that in a report that it was asked that if there is a slave girl and she acts in this way what should be done he said that the first time if she does it then give her 50 lashes and then continue to increase it Azu says, where does the, the subject come from? Well, the Holy Quran has not mentioned it at all. So your own nature will warn you that these cannot be the words of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Be careful, be mindful. Hazrat Muslim or about this hadith where it is said that the Holy Prophet first said that uh, give the lashes first and then stone to death because Allah has opened this way about that. Hadrat Muslim or has made a comment. He says that 
The Holy Prophet Sallallahu practice rejects this report because in his time, five people were stoned to death, but none of them were given the lashes first. It shows that the reporter of this hadith did not understand it. Abul Hayyan has reported that in his commentary that it is women who are practicing shameless acts with each other. And Huzur says, as Hazrat Muslim Dalanho has said, that women who are behaving in this way, they should be restricted. And what is being said is that it has to be done in a legal way. <coughs> Excuse me, Azu says that Masih Maud al-Islam has said that um, in the Holy Quran, the punishment for adultery can also be stoning. So the question should be that uh, does the Prophet Muhammad Islam believe in a directive which is not in the Holy Quran? and which by any abrogation system has appeared. This is not just because the Promised Messiah view was that not a single iota of the Holy Quran by any way abrogates any other word. It's not, a, not even an iota is abrogated. The directives of the Holy Quran will remain forever as they are. And then in an open debate to give this reference shows that he is not mentioning that verse. So this is an inference, who says, when I looked at it, Certainly the punishment of those people who fight God and His Messenger, that is, they rebel knowingly. This does not only mean the law of Islam, but everything else which Allah the Almighty has put into place, they insult it. And they try to fill the earth with mischief. For them, the punishment is that they be either put to death or they be crucified or their hand and feet be severed from in opposite directions or or they be banished from the land. So all those avenues are covered in this. There's a hadith where it is said that a man was given the punishment and then he had been banished from the country. So there is a link with adultery in this verse which is verified um, man who had committed this immorality. The Holy Prophet had him 
given the punishment of lashes and also banished him. So where the act has become more criminal in its nature than there is the punishment, but in the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, nobody was crucified, nor anybody's hands were, hand and feet were severed from opposite sides at opposite ends. Or the, the only thing that has been seen is that some of the tribe, some of the people were told to leave the land. But sometimes when it is a terrible crime like rape and a rape against a young girl a child and then she is damaged for life even in the most advanced hospitals they try and sometimes they say that this child will not either survive or will suffer all their lives in this condition in this state would a person only be given hundred stripes here the human nature says that such a man should be stoned to death where there is this crime against children then the verse of the holy quran dictates that and the human nature calls out that yes this is how this punishment should be given but this is only an exception and when there are exceptions, this shows that in the life of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu none of these were practiced. It shows that there was no crime committed with this kind of severity. And if something was done, then there is the report that somebody was told to leave the land and to move from there, to be banished. Now then, in the verse 17, If two men from among you are guilty of it, punish them both, and if they repent and amend, then leave them alone. Surely Allah is oft returning with compassion and is merciful. As you says, before I present the comments of the scholars, some points I want to highlight that in this verse, what are the areas covered? I have mentioned in my estimation the shamelessness of two men in committing adulterous acts with each other are mentioned here. And in the previous verse, two women are mentioned. If that is not correct, then for homosexuality there is no other punishment mentioned in the holy quran except for the wrath of allah which would descend from heavens here it is quite apparent that for homosexuality islam has then directed punishment but in verse 17 it is not said that what hard punishment is to be given while clearly it is said that if they repent and amend then leave them alone now the question is that when do they 
repent. While the Holy Quran says that when somebody is caught, then the time for forgiveness is over. But here, when the Holy Quran says that if they repent and amend, then leave them alone. While in the previous verse, women are mentioned and punishment is mentioned that give them the punishment. Now here, the Orientalist Wary says that Islam treats women very harshly and for men there is so much allowance made. But here the words Fa'azuhuma means that this will make things difficult for them, then it makes it apparent. And a lot of scholars have not taken it as physical punishment. Some have even mentioned that there is no need for physical punishment if two men behave in this way, call them and tell them off, severely reprimand them, that don't you know that you are earning the wrath of Allah and then they just bow their head and say, oh yes, yes. Now, this is amazing how they allege these kind of meanings and then attribute it to the Holy Quran. So says, I will explain. Sayyid bin Jubair, there are a lot of other references here which say clearly that if a man and a woman are mentioned here, I will come back to it later. In one report, in Al Kashaf, which is a commentary by Lama Al Mashkri. Here in Wallazani Yatiyaneha, he has taken the verse to uh, mention adultery. While he says that if two men behave in this way, then reprimand them and say, Are you not ashamed? Are you not afraid of God? For in Taba wa Aslaha, and if they repent and they say, Oh, we are very sorry, then leave them alone. And so this was the only punishment when two men are committing this. Again, this kind of an act from two men to be doing it is they are stretching it and applying it here. And those people, they had the thinking which was linked to the shadows of their own times and they were under that compulsion. The Holy Quran has brought light. Jal haqq wa zahqal batil. Wherever the Holy Quran has arrived, then all darkness is dispelled. So wherever you see this kind of uh, misunderstood shadow, then reject it. The Holy Quran is clear light and it has the power to dispel all darkness and these kind of uh, injunctions that they have attributed to the Holy Quran, they are not worthy of acceptance. And then in Tafsir Kabir Razi, it is said that all scholars are agreed that here the mention is of telling them off severely. Tell them that you have earned the wrath of God and you have deprived yourself of the justice of God. And the meaning of azu, that is the physical punishment, they have overlooked that. Some have taken it and some have either taken the two verses together 
In the word Azu Homa, about two men, some kind of act is mentioned which will not be just one act of punishment because they have not been told that restrain them in their confine them in their homes because the man would then not be able to go out to earn and that will then disturb the economic system while woman has not been made incumbent that she has to earn the living for the family but for the man it is said for Azuhuma that you just give them a few lashes that does not seem to be the case then why for intabawa aslaha that then if they repent and amend this shows that there is some length of time involved that with the physical punishment there is also the meaning contained in this azuhuma that i understand as it says that the society has the right that to give them some physical punishment and also to lay down some such restrictions on them that they will feel hurt with that and then if you see that they have repented and they have corrected their behavior, amended themselves, then remove those restrictions. Inna Allah kana rahima. Surely Allah is oft returning with compassion and is merciful. Now this debate about Toba, about them repenting, the scholars have then debated that when is the their repentance accepted and when not. Now look at the clash. There is this report in Abdullah bin Kathir that this is a report about a man and a woman who commit adultery. If it is that same verse, then it is abrogated by Surah An-Nur. Our own scholars, Ahmadi scholars of Hadith, when they listen to such a report, they shake up that how they are saying these things. Now, will these people then change their stance that nothing is abrogated in the Holy Quran? So such a Hadith which clashed with the Holy Quran, I submit most humbly to you that they cannot be Hadith. If they create this kind of a clash, if they try to put this kind of doubt on the Holy Quran, they cannot be reliable a Hadith. And they have then added these kind of things are then added. Sometimes some of the Khulafa had directed that these books must not be continued to be published because they have these kind of reports. But you must hold on firm to this principle that there is no doubt in the Holy Quran. And in the Quran, also Allah and Rasul, they are mentioned together. So when I say about the Holy Quran, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu was with the Holy Quran, totally. I do not see any difference in the viewpoint of the two. How can you have? something where you would have a shadow of doubt in the saying of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu So wherever there is doubt, then it is it does not belong to the Holy Quran and it does not belong to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu That is the principle. And then to have so much difference that you would not know what to follow while the Holy Quran is Mubin. It is a clear 
guidance while one faqih says you have the lashes dispensed and then you stone them and then about the men you beat them you throw stones at them throw shoes at them what do you do if these kind of things are not resolved properly it turns into a tragic joke when you turn away from the holy quran then you will find those kind of clashes walk hand in hand with loyalty with the holy quran then you will not have these kind of tragic incidents then they say that this is a report by ibn abbas that if you see somebody like the people of lot kill them now have you ever seen this applied anywhere and they say this is a marfu report may allah have great mercy on ibn abbas people have chosen him in allah wa inna ilayhi rajiun what a sorry state he was of a very high caliber but then people have alleged these reports that he has said this and he has said that Jesus says there are ridiculous and amazing things which are mentioned. If I read them all out, people would be totally astounded when they leave here. that uh, man was called Miles about whom it is said that it was Miles who was who had the injunction of being stoned there is a report by Hadra Jabir in Nelu Lothar where it is said that as a Jabir said that when uh, we were stoning him he cried out and said oh people take me to the Prophet of Allah and about this man it is also said that he had been taken to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu had himself said that stone him while that man as a Jubair says that my people have put me into this deception they told me that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu would not give me the punishment of stoning and if the Holy Prophet Sallallahu had said that he be stoned that he said why was he complaining in this way as a Jubair says that we did not stop and we killed him and when I came back to the Prophet and reported that the Holy Prophet said why did you not leave him why did you not bring him to me so <coughs> excuse me if the Holy Prophet Sallallahu had said that stone him to death, had Nauzubillah the Holy Prophet Sallallahu forgotten, and if it was a punishment uh, prescribed by Allah the Almighty, why would he have said that why did you not leave him and bring him to me? Maiz Aslami. This is the same report about that man that he was a Muslim about whom it is said that the Holy Prophet had turned away when he had himself made that admission. Then this again in Nalul Atar, this is a report by Hadrat Abu Huraira that Maiz Aslami had come to the Holy Prophet made an admission to his crime and the Holy Prophet turned away, then he came from one side, then from the second side and then the Holy Prophet turned away again he came back and the Holy Prophet turned his face away then the fourth time it happened and then the Holy Prophet's directive was 
that he be stoned to death. He was taken into the field and he was being stoned then. While here, one reporter who was there, he said that when the Holy Prophet ﷺ heard about it, this is what he said, and then the other report says that it was according to the directive of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he was being stoned and then he ran and then uh, there was some kind of a stick to uh, make the camels race there was something which was of that nature so Uzu says some words in this report cannot be read properly and uh, they said that the people then pounced on him and killed him. When this was reported to the Holy Prophet he said, why didn't you leave him alone? So now look at this, there is so much difference in the two reports. Ahmad ibn Majah and Tirmidhi has mentioned that. As you said, it's not only the those two books. As you says, today we will have to stop the dars today early because people of the Jamaat knows that one of our very devoted loyal uh, friend Hadrat Hilmi Sayyid Hilmi Shafi has passed away in Alilah and Alay Rajun and his funeral prayers will be held just now and I will give you an introduction those people who do not have an introduction of him in Liqa Maal Arab, most people must have seen him and people used to write from all over the world that he is such a lovely man and in Liqa Maal Arab, with his participation everything comes to life the way he translated and his mastery of speech is excellent and this is not something that only Ahmadi said the non Ahmadis also said that from the Arabs as well the letters that I used to receive about Liqam al Arab in that about Helmi Ashafi Sahib there were comments which were very complimentary his way of speech was lovely and I used to say to him that this this must be recorded in Liqam al Arab I used to say that I enjoy your translation so much that I don't enjoy any other translation like that it seems that you <coughs> go deep into my spirit and give that translation he would cry at that he would weep at that it seemed as if our hearts were beating together the way I was speaking he would speak in that same with the same notes of high and low this Allah the Almighty had given him as a quality then to have the same kind of grief and also then at other points to present the same joy full tone in my knowledge there is no other translator of this kind who would have this quality of the words of the expressions would become the same in emotion in Germany as well there are translators but this was a glorious translation and that was the reason that he was very popular the world over and his love for Khilafat was such that you do get examples of that with the grace of Allah but he had a special glory in that uh, recently before his son's wedding he had to go to Egypt and there for the first time he had a heart attack which was very severe but he insisted that I need to go back to London and in the beginning the doctor said you cannot it is not possible 
Your health does not allow that. But it seems that his insistence was so great that then they agreed and they allowed him to travel here. While he was there, when he watched the Likamara program, he would cry that I wish I could go again and I would undertake this duty. This was his great love and in the translation of Tafsir e Kabir as well, he was so devoted, he was so sincere, he was out of Ansar min Allah or Ansar lillah that he was a helper for the sake of God. Thirty years ago probably he had joined Ahmadiyyat after two years of discussing and debating with Mustafa Sabit. He had mentioned that uh, that it was probably 30 years ago probably and then I understood why he loved uh, Mustafa Sabit Sahib so much. He had he did not have so much love for any other person like uh, Mustafa Sabit. He said to me that call him here as well. Mustafa Sabit Sahib was suffering ill health and in my estimation he could not undertake this burden and this is a huge burden so I said to him that I, I do not want to put him under this burden. Then he accepted, but uh, he really wanted that, that they remain together. His wife, uh, Hilmi Shafi Sahib's wife, says that he continued to say in Egypt that I want to go back to London. That's my heart's desire. But as who says, the difficulty was that when I heard that he has arrived, Firstly, this was done very quickly. I wanted him to rest and then be assured that he's well. But then I was told that the doctors are saying it's all right. But I then said that uh, he should rest. But it seems if he had got my message correctly, then he would not have come here. Or maybe the what was relayed to him was that uh, there is something said for my health, but then there is also an order. I said to him, I sent the message that in my estimation it is dangerous and my desire was that I would have come and met you but because of the heavy duties in Ramadan I cannot come to see you I will come afterwards what I meant was that I cannot even think that you should come in Ramadan but it was not relayed to him correctly and his wife then brought him here another difficulty that I am really sad about that I could not meet him. He came before Asr, but nobody told me. He had spoken to Major Sahib and he said that he had a mulaqat. And I said to Major Sahib, why didn't you tell me I would have gone to him? Because in this new flat he had to go um, to the first floor taking those steps. Nobody even mentioned to me that he has arrived. And they said to him that Huzur has to go for a walk and he cannot see you before. That was an injustice. He sat there. When I came for prayers, he was peeping from the window and his wife said that what a lovely place. He said to his wife that I can it's a sub lovely spot. I'll be able to see Hazur going for prayer. And he said, I pray. This is my desire that I be buried somewhere where I'll be close to Hazur. So Hazur says, this was the decree of Allah, it seems, that uh, Allah, the Almighty, then did not allow the doctor to have any wisdom and allowed him to travel and it was the decree of Allah that this is where he had 
to die and this is where he had to be buried so he was brought here he wanted to see the new house alhamdulillah he saw the new house before he was going he had this desire that call me close i want to be close to you because I, if I live at a distance, I can't say uh, properly. So, when I saw him, when he saw me, his face lit up with happiness. But the difficulty is that I didn't know, otherwise there was time. That was the degree of Allah, but it would have fulfilled my desire and his desire. When he had come for mulaqat, he had just spoken to me as he was standing there, the private secretary he was speaking to, and at that time, uh, the attack, the heart attack he had, that was fatal. He then leaned against the wall, and they all tried. I didn't even know about that. A family came to see me. There was one of them who was a nurse. Their son was looking very unhappy, and he said, there is this accident, and my mother also tried to revive him. And then when Salim came in, I said, who's this? And he said, Hilmi Shafi Sahib. And then that was the time when I came to know of it. And then it would have been equal for me to go there or not. And then the ambulance was called. I was only able to see his face. I could not meet him then. Now the decision that has been taken is that his funeral prayers will just now, before Zohar prayers, will be held. But it is my desire that I want to uh, help shoulder his coffin. The coffin is in number 14 guest house. I will walk with the coffin, giving, lending my shoulder for uh, bringing his coffin to the mosque. Then you can all line up and after uh, so, um, we will then have Zohar prayer and those who can go, you should go for his burial. And all of you should pray for this devoted servant of Ahmadiyya that Allah immerses him in his mercy and pray for his children and his wife that may Allah give them uh, strength of faith.